Do you think it's possible that there is private aerospace companies, contractors that have technology that they're not sharing with the mainstream academia? Technology? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Science? I don't know. Like anti-gravity. Do you think it's possible that there's some sort of private aerospace weapons contractor like whatever, for example, Boeing or Lockheed that has figured out anti-gravity and it's not being shared with the public? Like it, I think it's because possible. Because it would, it would effectively – it would be immune to FOIA requests, right, because it's a private company. That's a, that's a theory I've heard or maybe it's not even a theory. Maybe it's a fact, but – Generally speaking, yeah, I think that I think that is possible that our private defense industries and contractors have technology that isn't promulgated and is classified. Hmm. But it would be for them to be testing it off the coast of. That's not a defense contractor. That is a that would be a government program. It would have to be right. Yeah, Lockheed wouldn't just be out in those areas like that. That would have to be again approved military you know test, which means. But wouldn't the wouldn't I mean. Forgive me if this is like an ignorant question. I don't know anything about this stuff. <laughs> so Lockheed wouldn't be able to get permission or work with the military to do this kind of testing. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying okay. that's not the way things work on a regular basis. Right. Um, they go to ranges all the time. I've been to ranges as a, in the defense industry, you know, mm -hmm. to work on various technologies. But operational flight training areas and flight operation areas are a totally different beast. You know what I mean? Um, that's, um, you know, different between... Um, I don't even know what the different. I don't even know the best way to phrase it, but um, like I said, like that entry area to our working area is one of the busiest places of the sky on the eastern seaboard, right? Right. And so we're now putting we're testing objects by putting them directly at the entry point of that area at altitude after hazard reports have been submitted right. for eight years. Right. I don't see the logic. I don't see how we could be testing against ourselves, especially when we kind of zoom out and say, okay, where are we now in the world about this topic? Do mm. we really think that? You know, John Ratcliffe and President, former President Obama are going out on a limb because we're testing some, you know, uh, EW on the East Coast. It, the conversation has got too large to support the thesis that we're testing EW. Okay. You know what I mean? In my, in my opinion, like we've gone beyond that just based off of how much conversation has been around this because we're just drawing more attention to this. Right. Sense, you know what I mean? Right. And that's another kind of element you have to throw into this whole thing is if it was something we, why would we be throwing all this attention? Why would the U S government intentionally, intentionally kind of like acknowledge this like this? Why mm -hmm. would the Pentagon acknowledge it so much? You always have to question their intentions just based on history. Right. Mm -hmm. One speaking of history, one thing I often think of, and I, this isn't necessarily a leading question, but um, what lessons did we learn from the proliferation of nuclear weapons? Right? We created a nuclear weapon, and others were trying to create it. And now we live in a world that has nuclear weapons everywhere, and it's a fear. If we developed a technology that had the power of a nuclear weapon, perhaps even greater, what lessons would we have learned from that proliferation and taken that and applied to this new technology. Yeah. Where would we have blackened out the conversation? The engineering side? At the fundamental science side? I don't know the answer to these questions, but I imagine we learned some lessons from that. Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like we have, we're a species that has amnesia, amnesia when it comes to this kind of stuff. You know what really kind of like tipped off, tipped me off to, or, or, made me start leaning in the direction of it's it could be human technology is that was when the pentagon started really acknowledging it and you know putting out the new york times dropping these articles and the pentagon putting out more and more information about it and sh declassifying these reports but not showing the whole thing like that's when i started to sort of go you know switch to maybe this isn't some sort of extraterrestrial thing. Maybe this could very plausibly be something a foreign nation has or that we have that we're just not getting the whole truth about it. I bet um, it's probably somewhere in the middle, you know? I would I would think somewhere that... in the middle as in like we took the technology that we found from somewhere off Earth and then we sort of like back engineered it or something. I think that'd be the safer bet to to make that assumption that um it's very probable if this has been going on for a while that some of what we're seeing is is our own, but gener but originates from 
you know, something else and not to say alien or, or your other, fla- you know, whatever the flavor of other you like. But mm-hmm. that I think that's a very feasible uh, consideration to think that, you know, we've been trying to work in engineering this and some sightings could be contributed to that. I think that's a reasonable statement. What do you think about Bob Lazar's story? How how much credit do you give that? Have you ever talked to him? Oh, no, not personally, no. Um, I, I mean, it's interesting, and like I told Joe, I you know I want to believe it. It's it's interesting, but I just don't have any evidence other than you know the media that's been created to tell his story, and that's just not sufficient for me to draw a conclusion on my own. Mm. What do you think about the th- the way he describes um, the way he describes the the anti gravity propulsion and being able to manipulate time. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's something that you, you're, you study, right? That's something that, yeah, you're very much I mean, into. that's grounded in, in, in good science. Um, anytime that you would create some type of, uh, field that warps space time around you, you would be by necessity, uh, warping time as well. Um, any increase in gravity or concentration of it in some sense, um, is going to, um, Cause time to slow down the more dense and the more, the stronger those, the stronger the gravity is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. And so that, you know, um, I don't know if that supports his story necessarily. That's something we've known for a long time, mm-hmm. uh, 20 years or so. Uh, but it is consistent with, uh, I think special relativity or excuse me, general relativity. Mm-hmm. Cause if you think of the way Fravor talked about the Tic Tac moving, it seemed like he was basically describing a laser pointer, right? That's the way those things moved. If you pointed at a wall, it was moving as if it didn't have mass. I think right. would be a good way of describing it. Uh, light does not really have mass, so um, mm. a shadow or something that was non-massive could move as if it didn't have mass. If it wasn't physically real, so it it was nuts and bolts, but it was also psychic, if you will, like like knew where he was going to be, right? Yeah, I mean, the object showed up at the cat point. Um, is that, is that quote, that wouldn't be psychic. I know sort of the way these things are moving doesn't necessarily jive with general relativity, right? Like these things could be using some sort of, some sort of propulsion that is gravity, like anti-gravity, or it's not necessarily like a jet, it's not shooting something out the back, to move. It's somehow manipulating gravity to move like that. I'll agree that we don't see them spitting stuff out the back, but <laughs> the mechanism that they are using, although gravity and space-time metric engineering is a potential option for that, there, I think, are others as well. Really? Um, yeah. So, you know, there's... Um, well, let me just say this. Um, <clears throat> transportation, really, at the end of the day, comes down to energy. Right. right? If, we, if you can put enough energy into a, one... Piece. We have the math to build a, you know, a warp drive or what have you, engineer space-time metric, uh, warp space-time, which therefore would be warping gravity and allow you to potentially move superliminally. That's, you know, one mm-hmm. fun theory. Um, mass reduction is, you know, a technology that has been proposed. If you were able to reduce the mass of an object, then moving it through the air would be much more seamless. Um, reducing air friction. Is it warping space-time around it to avoid the friction or is it somehow moving air particles around it, right? Um, we just don't know the answer to these questions. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I'm doing is trying to get the answers to those. Um, and the way I'm doing it is through the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, uh, where I chair the UAP Integration and Outreach Committee. It's about a 50-person large um, engineering organization uh, under the AIAA or AIAA as I call it. Uh, which is a professional engineering organization with 30,000 plus members. Uh, And we've built a team of of fantastic, you know, industry engineers that are kind of coming out of the woodwork to study this kind of from an industry first viewpoint. And one of the projects that we have underway is to help define what some of the detection mechanisms could be for these objects. And just like you said, is it uh, affecting gravity and how can we detect that? Is it using some type of ionization um, and magnohydrodynamics to move the air around the vehicle. Um, and if that's the case, how can we detect that? And so we're going to be promulgating um, a document to the engineering industry on a yearly basis that updates the best sensing phenomenologies and lessons learned and everything we know so that the rest of the industry can start putting technology together to expand our data sets.